I can't even believe I'm sharing this on YouTube, but I told myself I'm gonna be more vulnerable, so here you go. Welcome back to my channel. My name is LaShonda Smith, and today I wanna share a video about my planner company. I have gotten questions in reference to like, why don't I promote my planners anymore? Am I still selling my planners? Do I still offer my planners? Like what's going on with the planners? So I wanted to create this video to kind of address the elephant in the room. If you're new to my channel, if you're new to me, you probably have no idea what the heck I'm talking about. As you can see, you've probably seen in previous videos, I have like planners displayed up here in my background. And those are actually planners that I created that are a part of my planner company. But I have completely pulled back from promoting my planners and I'm actually about to go in a direction. I'm gonna talk about that later in this video. But before I do that, I wanted to address what happened to my planner company. Because a lot of people want to start a planner company and, or they just wanna sell planners or journals in their business. And I have learned a lot from having a planner company for a few years. So I wanna talk about some different stuff. So I have my notes here. I wanna kill, I wanna give like a quick backstory. This is actually my second time recording this because I felt like the first time I was rambling and I don't want this video to be super long. So I wanna give you guys a backstory. I wanna share what happened and I wanna share some mistakes that I made as well as what I'm gonna be doing different moving forward. So quick backstory. I started my planner company in 2020 during the big C word. Don't wanna address that, but you know during that time we had tons of time on our hands to just kind of figure out life, figure out what we wanted to do. I knew at that time I wanted to kind of transition out of coaching, which is crazy because then I transitioned back into coaching after that, but I digress. We're not talking about that today. I wanted to leave coaching and I wanted to still help people. So I felt that it would be a really good idea to create planners because I myself am a planner girl. I love planners. I love writing in notebooks and stationary products and all those things. And because I actually already created something similar to a planner, a few years back, I created something called the Create Your Brand Execution Guide using KDP. And I was really, really proud of this. It's just something about holding your own product that you visualized and you was able to bring it to life. I wanted to feel that again and I wanted to be able to offer something to my community that is tangible, that will take them through the steps and help them get whatever it is that they need to get done in their business. So I started Brand Planners. Now, this was the very first like e-commerce type of business I had been in. I'm so used to coaching or even doing photography or having my cupcake business like way back in the day. I had never really learned how to sell a physical product online and I had never learned how to like ship physical products. So this was gonna be like a new territory for me to step into, but I was willing to do it because I was super excited about my planners. So I ended up creating about four or five planners, which I'm gonna show you in a second. But the goal of these planners was to basically replace your immediate need for a coach if you were on a budget and you technically could not afford to hire a coach at the price point that coaches typically are at. So I wanted to create a planner where it will take you from A to B or whatever, and that will kind of be like your, your coach in your pocket or your coach in the planner type thing. So that was kind of the direction that I was going in with Brand Planner. So I got my LLC, got my EIN, got my PO box, I got all the shipping equipment that I needed and I was ready to go. I'm like, okay, I got all my stuff legalized. I went ahead and started creating my planners and I'll show them to you really, really quick. And before I actually show, it, it is something that I wanna kind of address real quick that I forgot to mention. So when I first launched Brand Planners, right, I wanna say right at the end of 2020 or something like that, I started off with offering printable planners. So it was a digital product and the goal was that you would go and print the, the planner at like Office Depot or something like that, and then you would use it or whatever. So I had seen some people doing this and I was like, well, I could take that. It'll be easier. I don't have to worry about inventory, you know, all that fun stuff. So I was trying to prevent the inventory issue. And what I like to do is because even though it's a digital product, you want a way to promote it. So I wanted to be able to have a physical version of what it would look like after you printed it at a place like Office Depot or Office Max. And I realized this is the 
the copy. This is like the official first one that I created. And I realized it was almost $50 to print this bad boy <laughs> in color, because this is a color um, planner. It was about $50 to print this. Now don't get me wrong, it was thick, but $50? And I had to really take a step back and be like, look Shonda, someone, they already have to purchase the digital form. So the digital form I think was like $20. I don't even remember now. But let's just say it was $20. And then they have to go and spend $50 to get it printed at Office Depot. It just was not realistic. Even if they did black and white, just the amount of steps that it was gonna take for them to have it, because what will happen is you will purchase it and then you will never get around to printing it and then that, that will lead to you never get around to utilizing information that's in it. So I wanted to make it as easy as possible for my audience to be able to ask, or my customers to actually use the product. So I opted out of that, that version and I was just like, I'm gonna just print on myself. I'm gonna go through a printer company and it's, the quality is better anyway. But I was like, I'm gonna print these out, I'm gonna have these printed. And so when they order them, they will get a physical copy shipped to them. And so I created Brand Planner. This is to help you with your target audience, help you with Facebook and Instagram ads, things like that. This one is to help you get your brand created within the next 30 days. So it teaches you about social media, how to create a brand for yourself and prepare you for the launch. And then I created these two right here, which are like daily planners. So you plan your business activities every day in these. And it has one side with your business to-do list and another side with your household to-do list. And then I just made two different versions, like two different covers. And then I have the social media content planner and the content calendar. So the social media content planner is to help you plan out your content. So help you come up with content ideas and give you a way to keep up with your content ideas. Because what happens is a lot of my clients will write down their ideas on like a notebook or on sticky notes or something like that. And then they, you can never find them when you need to come up with content. So in here is actually different categories for your content, different areas for you to put content. Then you can just pull from this when you're creating YouTube content or Instagram content. And then this one is actually the content calendar. So now that you have your ideas, you're actually putting them in this one and you are planning it out for the month or for the week. So I had all my planners ready to go. I started my pre-launch. I launched on Instagram and I made two sales. And at the time I was like, okay, it's not the best, it's not the worst, but two people believed in my product. So I shipped them out. That gave me the opportunity to, you know, get the kinks out the way with the shipping labels and actually getting it to the post office and all the other stuff. So I learned the basics of what it looks like to ship your products with my first two customers. But after that, it was crickets. I mean, like I wasn't getting any sales and I was getting people like, oh my God, this is so cute. Oh my God, this is so cool. I need one of these, but the sales were not coming through. And so I was trying different techniques, trying different strategies to try to get more sales in the door. And eventually I was like, this is hard. <laughs> Selling physical products is hard. And I realized that with this type of product, I was like, I noticed when I did speaking engagements or if I did something in person where I was offering these, that's when I was selling these. So when I was doing like my brand photo shoots, when I was doing speaking engagements, anytime someone was able to physically touch it and flip through it and me explain like, yeah, this is what this is for, this is what this is for, it sold every single time. So I found that I was moving products by just showing up in person and letting them be able to touch it, flip through it and those type of things. And it was selling like that. I didn't have to worry about shipping and all the other stuff. So I kind of pivoted my marketing in reference to selling these. So I kind of completely fell off of promoting on Instagram. I gave Instagram a full year, the whole 2021. I was actively posting like once or twice a day showing you know flip throughs of the planner doing the most like i i feel like i was doing the most and i feel that during that time that's when reels had first came out 
And so I was trying to learn about reels and it was just, it was a lot. And I just realized like, why am I doing all of this when I'm not even pushing product through Instagram? Like I wasn't getting any sales off of Instagram. I was getting majority of my sales from in person. <laughs> and then I was including my planners with my coaching clients. So when I would get a coaching client, I would give them a welcome packet and it would have my planners in it because this was a part of the process of how I was helping them in their business. So I was pushing products through that way. And then I was also pushing products when I was doing brand photography and offering that either with the package or as an upsell whenever we were at the shoot. So that was working for me. And that was working for me for quite some time. But I did run into some some problems. And so I want to address those now. So I'm actually going to do a whole video on big mistakes that I made with my planner company or with creating and selling planners. But I do want to still address some mistakes that I made here as well. The first mistake that I made was that I did not pre-launch or do pre-orders with my planners. That was a very first mistake. I ordered inventory prematurely. I had not verified the need for the product, even though I knew that it was a need. I knew that once my clients or once my customers got the product, that it was going to help them in their business. But I didn't take the time to build my community first, get pre-orders to verify like you are going to get this amount of sales. This is the amount of inventory you need to purchase. I didn't do none of that. <laughs> I just ordered, I guesstimated how many planners I thought I needed. And because I had already created so many, which I'm going to get into that, I had to get 20 to 25 of each one. And I had like five or six planners. So that was the first mistake I made. The second mistake that I made is that I bought way too much inventory. And you would think purchasing 25, you know, planners that would be enough, you know, that would get pushed fast. Well, I learned that it wasn't. It was too much inventory because I had not verified the need for the products. And I am still to this day sitting on some inventory for certain planners because some planners did way better than other planners. So one of my best sellers is this one right here, the social media content planner. Anytime I tell anybody about this planner, I flip through this planner, it goes, it sells like hotcakes. This one right here. The content calendar, I pretty much have almost all of the inventory for this one. And the thing is, with the social media content planner, there's actually a content calendar in the back, which is the same thing as this right here. But it's like almost like a little trial period of the content, con the content calendar in this one. I realized with this one that this the way that i structured this if you are not already familiar with creating content and creating a calendar for yourself this can kind of become a little confusing for some and so if i'm being honest i didn't even really push this one because i was still trying to figure out how can i help people who are actively scheduling out their content for me I use online. So it was, it was just like some, this was one of the products where I wish I would have tested it out before I ordered a whole bunch of inventory. So I still don't know what I'm going to do with these because I have like all the inventory for this one. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with this one, but I stopped pushing this one because I was just like, I don't know, man. <laughs> like it's cute and it's very detailed, but I had to, fall back on this one. So I still have that one. Now these right here, these also sold really well. The daily agendas. This one was really easy to sell because it's something that you're going to be using every single day. And I actively use it almost every single day. And so if you like to plan your stuff, this one is a really good one. So that was one of my good sellers. This is another one that I kind of started sitting on because there became a time where with ads, they made some changes with the iOS update and stuff. And I kind of myself pulled back from running ads and stuff. And I realized with this one, this is one where you have to have an audience that's already educated a little bit on ads in order for them to even understand how to utilize this. Cause this one is talking about campaigns 
and you know different topics different ways like for how you can set up your ads and you know a and b testing like all of that kind of stuff and if i'm not educating my audience on that at the time then this one is just kind of sitting there so because i never really circled back to talking about running ads this one ended up just kind of sitting in inventory as well because I'm always talking about social media. So anytime I was doing speaking, this one was always, you know, this one was always selling. But I realized that if I'm not constantly talking about it, it wasn't going nowhere. So that was a mistake that I made getting too much inventory. I already hit on the other mistake. I didn't test my product. So luckily, majority of them work well, except that one that I mentioned, the content calendar, I'm still kind of on the fence with that one, so I stopped pushing that. But in the future, any planner that I create, I actively want to use it for a little bit, and then I want to even give it to a couple beta testers to test it out and get feedback. Because if I would have did that with those planners and with that one specifically, I would have started catching some mistakes or some some things that I would have needed to kind of adjust to make it a smoother experience, if that makes sense. And then the last mistake that I want to talk about is, no, there's two. One, the second to last mistake is that I did not invest in marketing. I was trying not to invest in ads. I did a very, very little tiny bit, but I didn't give myself enough space to really invest in my marketing for this because my audience was already small. And because I was starting my Instagram from scratch, so literally I didn't have any following on my brand planners account. And then I grew to about um, 200 followers before I launched. That's like, when I launched, I didn't really have anyone that I was launching to. Like even though I had 200 followers, I should have did a lot more of building my audience if I was trying to do an org organic launch. So. That was a, I feel like that was a major mistake, not investing in marketing, getting in front of more eyeballs, you know, so that I can push more products. And then the last mistake that I made was launching with way too many options. I mean, look at how many dang on planners I done showed y'all. Like, <laughs> launching with all of this, and I had never really launched a physical product, I learned quickly you need to have one product maximize and perfect the strategy, the marketing, whatever it is that you need to do with that one, and then replicate that with the other ones that come out. But because I launched with too many planners that caused me to launch with too much inventory and just trying to figure it all out, and then I got to rotate and take turns promoting each planner. And when, I, when I'm not talking about this one, then these aren't doing well. When I'm not talking about these, this one isn't doing well learning i'm telling you all this because if you are interested in selling planners or journals this is stuff that i want you to understand if you are thinking about doing it this way don't do it do what i say don't do what i do i learned it the hard way and as a result i am still sitting on inventory like that is still something and now we're in 2023 and you all know that social media and the time changes so there are certain planners that are starting to become a little dated. They still got a little, little time left, but my perspective and my strategy is different than what is in some of the planners now. And so it's like, <laughs> you know. Okay, so now that I talked about some of the mistakes I made, I wanna share with you what I'm doing different because I am about to relaunch brand planners. Technically, it never went anywhere. I just started giving my planners to my clients and selling them at like speaking engagements and stuff like that. But I do plan to come back with the online sales of my planner company, but it's gonna be a little different than how I did it the first time around. So the first thing that I'm doing differently is I'm launching with way less planners. That is the very first thing. I am not going to jump head first into purchasing a whole bunch of planners at the beginning because I learned my lesson. And the thing is, as time changes, you start to get to a place where you don't even want to promote that planner anymore. Like, that's one thing I experienced. I didn't even want to promote certain planners anymore because I didn't want to talk about that information anymore. Like, I was ready to move on. So I want to be able to sell out and not have to sit on inventory because do you would you really want to throw away something like this like you know like you don't want to throw it away but you don't want to be sitting on the inventory and can't utilize it anymore as well 
The second thing that I'm doing differently is I want to create a signature planner. So it's kind of hard because now that I'm in the second stage of doing my planner company, I have a whole new list of different ones that I want to create again, but I'm not going to allow myself to do it. So I want to have one signature planner that I can really dominate the market with and then start adding different ones to it. Another thing that I'm doing differently this time is I'm definitely going to be doing pre-orders and I'm going to start trying something called collection drops. So I know I just mentioned earlier that I want to have a signature planner, but I want to also try something called collection drops. So there's different, like for example, these two, it's the same planner, but there's different covers. So when it comes to like something like a daily agenda where it's a repetitive page, and you're literally using this every single day, I would like to have different variants of this type of planner with different covers. Because like for me, I love pink, but I know some people don't love pink. And so I wanna have different types and I wanna do drops. So that way, ideally, if I could do a drop per quarter and there's like four different variants of like the same planner or something like that, then I have the option to do that. But instead of buying inventory for those four, I can literally do pre-orders and then only order the ones that people pre-order. So that way I'm not sitting on inventory, I'm able to be creative and create different covers and still move product that way. So I do wanna try something called collection drops. I still haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna do the signature planner with the collection drops and all that stuff. But those are things that I definitely want to do differently this time around. The next thing I wanna do differently is invest in marketing. I'm not gonna be trying to rely on organic sales anymore. Like I understand that they say that you need to take your time on running ads, but sometimes when you have a smaller audience, until like, for example, my YouTube channel. Once my YouTube channel starts doing well, then I feel that it will be a lot easier to push my planners because I know I'm getting a certain amount of views per video. And if I do, you know, a certain amount of views and get a certain amount of sales from each video I talk about my planners, then you can kind of launch organically and you're gonna make some sales. But until then, like, I'm not gonna wait on people to discover me through organic reach. Like I have to invest in marketing, invest in ads, even if it's $5 a day, like I have to get in front of more people because it's getting harder and harder to get in front of people with the way social media is going right now. So that's a whole thing, but I'm gonna invest in marketing. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do differently is before I launch any planners from now on, I'm going to actively test the product. So not just myself testing the product, I want to actually have beta testers that are going to use the planner for maybe like 30 days or something like that, maybe 15 to 30 days and get their real time feedback like, oh, I love this or maybe you should change this or I would love if you had added this. That way I can make sure that it's not just helpful for me, but that it's helpful for those that are going to be purchasing the dang on planner. So that's what happened to the planner company. Technically, it is still in business. I just have not been actively promoting it, but you will be seeing a lot more of me promoting brand planners on this platform. I'm also gonna be, this is the start of a series with my planner series where I'm gonna be teaching you how I created my planners, how to start a planner company if that's something you're interested in, and just some other things that I wanna talk about on this topic. So many people have been waiting for this video on the videos that are coming. So if you've made it this far in the video, what you waiting on, hit subscribe for good vibes so that you can be notified when I do these future videos. But I hope you enjoyed this. I will see you in the next video. Bye.